So let's jump straight in. First of all, this is how a cycle of fifths sounds. It's a very strong chord progression. It originates in classical music. And basically, every any time you resolve a chord down a fifth, that's a very strong resolution for a chord. So um, it's always moving somewhere. So first of all, there are two kinds of cycle of fifths. First of all, there's a perfect cycle of fifths, which is where you go down a perfect fifth every time. And when you do that, it will take you through all 12 uh, notes of, on the keyboard. So if I start at C, So it's a long progression, 12 chords is a long time. And for that reason, the perfect cycle of fifths is hardly ever used in music. It's kind of a, it's interesting to know about, but actually anytime you hear a cycle of fifths, it will usually be the other type of cycle of fifths, which is called a diatonic cycle of fifths. First of all, the term diatonic just means major or minor. So it refers to pieces of music that are in the major or minor scale. And that's most of popular music, most of classical music up until the 20th century. Um, most music was being written in major or minor scales. So for a diatonic cycle of fifths, you go down a fifth each time, but you keep it within the scale that you're in. So if, if it's a major scale or a minor scale, say we're in C minor, we'll start going down fifths within the scale. So let's go down a fifth within the scale. F minor, B flat major, E flat major, all perfect fifths so far. So here we have an A flat major, and if we were to go down a perfect fifth, we would get D flat major, but that's not in the key of C minor. And to play a D flat major would be a perfect cycle of fifths. But here we're talking about a diatonic cycle of fifths. So we're gonna keep it in the scale, count down five notes within the scale. Gives us a D diminished. And then count down a fifth from D. Gives us another perfect fifth to G eventually resolving to C minor. So here's how the diatonic cycle of fifth sounds. So in a diatonic cycle of fifths in classical music, uh, the the character of the chord, whether it's major or minor, is dictated by the key and all you do is count up in thirds to build a chord and whatever notes are in that scale will dictate whether it's a major or minor chord. So in C minor, the one chord is going to be a minor chord. Now if we go to F and build a chord within the scale of C minor, it will give us a flat three and the five, so it will dictate that it's an F minor chord. And now let's build a triad off the B flat. What kind of third do you have in the scale of C minor? You'll have a natural D and a natural F, so you get a B flat major chord. Then an E flat. Building off D, what do we get? Uh, B and F for the third then up another third, we would have an A-flat. So that's a D-diminished triad. 
and then the G. It would actually be a G minor chord, because C minor has a B flat. But what's common in classical music and all music is to make that last chord just an exception for a really strong resolution. We make it a G major, or if you're playing a seventh, a G dominant seven. And that resolves down a fifth to the one chord. But why is it so popular with composers? Well, a diatonic cycle of fifths is seven chords because it goes through each note of the scale and there are seven notes in a scale. So it's a great way of filling up some time and usually in music we write eight bar phrases. So what it means you can do is have one chord sustained for each bar and that will give you a seven bar chord progression but then what's usual is to double the one chord and they usually double it either playing it twice at the end just to establish that one chord or they start with the one chord and they end on the one chord so So what's common with composers is they'll, is they'll just come up with a melodic phrase that goes over two of the chords. And then it's just great because then they can just transpose that same melodic phrase over each chord progression, each two chord cell. So a 2-5-1, which is the most common chord progression in jazz, is actually just the final three chords of a cycle of fifths, whether you're playing in the major scale or the minor scale. And another chord progression you'll probably see a lot in jazz is not 2-5-1, but 6-2-5-1. And a 6251 is just the last four chords in a cycle of fifths. So 6251 in C major would be A minor, D minor, G dominant 7, C major 7. So a cycle of fifths in jazz will be the same, it will usually be a diatonic cycle of fifths, so you get a seven chord sequence. And really the main difference is that we're going to add some extensions, so instead of just playing triads, which I've mainly done up till now, we're going to add a seventh, maybe a ninth.
So straight away that sounds more harmonically rich with these extended harmony notes, the sevenths and the ninths. But it doesn't sound that jazzy, does it? Because it's all still within the scale. And here's how we really make things sound more interesting. Let's start adding notes that are outside the scale of C minor. Got a flat nine on that F, the G flat. flat 9 on E flat, so the F flat, also known as an E. So now we've laid down all the groundwork, let's have some fun and think about some patterns and how we can use them in a jazz context. So if you watch my video on tritone substitution, you'll know how you can substitute any dominant 7 chord you see. You can play a dominant 7 chord that's a tritone away. So let's try using this principle and applying it to our cycle of fifths. Well, every dominant 7 chord we see, we're going to play the dominant 7 chord, a tritone away. C minor 7. Instead of F dominant 7, we'll play a B dominant 7, which resolves the same way as an F dominant 7 would, down to B flat major. Now we would have an E flat dominant 7. Let's tritone substitute it get an A dominant 7 and basically you're going to get a chromatic moving bass line going down so that's a very nice pattern you can play so now we come to my final pattern that I'm going to talk about today, possibly my favourite of the patterns in the cycle of fifths. Um, basically we're going to do a series of two fives, so the last chords in the two five one. So I do this a lot in my compositions, a lot of the chord progressions, I'll use this device. So start with a 2-5-1 in C, would be D minor 7 to G dominant 7. Now we're going to do another 2-5-1, a half step down from C. So the 2 chord will be a C sharp minor 7. And the 5 chord will be an F sharp dominant 7. And we'll keep doing this pattern. So 